are getting two wines of great ego that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for, for a time and times and a half time from, from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's coming back on the clouds and he will give to each person according to what they have done. Jesus says in the Bible that if man will believe and is baptised, he will be saved. If he does not believe, he shall be condemned. You choose whether you will have eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. You have to choose for your own soul. So where where will you go? Where where will you go when you die? Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go to hell? You can choose. The Bible tells us to choose life. Choose life. God has given us his son Jesus so that we can have eternal life in heaven. But we must do it God's way, not our own way. Because our own way can lead to destruction. Our own way can lead to eternal death. The second death, destruction. The devil is a real person. Don't let him lie to you and say that he doesn't exist because he does exist. He is a real person. And he is, he is, he is there. He does exist. Jesus is Lord, hallelujah. Maybe the, the governments aren't very righteous and there's a lot of unrighteous things happening. Yeah. But to blame that in Jesus, a man who actually stood against all that, that's what I was trying to tell him. You know, it's, it's, it's not right. I mean, Jesus stood against all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Unrighteousness, he, he was righteous. So, that's right. Aye. And it's not. It's not really that hard to understand, but I think they, they, they need to be reached. God needs to reach their heart, and then their mind falls on, doesn't it? He's, the Nessos text is, is known as the text is by canons. So what what the Jehovah Witnesses have, the New World Translation, the NIV, and the New American Standard are from the uh, text is by canons, which which were found in Alexandra in Egypt, which were not Christian. Like the ones we go by, the King James Bible manuscripts come from Antioch, yeah. where Christians were first called Christians. If you read the Book of Acts, yeah. Christians gathered in Antioch to study the Word of God, to study to show themselves approved. See, so yeah. so most Unlike. of these manuscripts are from Antioch, and it's something like it's something like 99 point something percent are uh, all aligned with with the Textus Receptus. That's why it's called the Textus Receptus because it means. In, Latin, the majority text. Doing well until that guy interrupted you. Is that guy got across there? I think he has. He has. Well, I'll just. Are you out? Have you got a Bible? Or? I don't I have, have a Bible. Got, I, don't, I don't think I've got my scriptures with me. Yeah. 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 Here's a Bible. Verse about the devil deceiving the world, right. and then I'll read the whole chapter out. The 
book of Revelation, chapter 12. In verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In the book of Revel Revelation, chapter 12, this is what it says. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crown, crowns up upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven, Michael, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon.
confess as a Christian, most Christians believe Jesus is coming back to judge the earth, but also in Islam, Jesus is one of those who come and judge the earth as well. And so are you in right standing with the Son of God? There are many religions out there truly identify who Jesus Christ is according to the Bible, according to the Quran, according to the Vedas, who are correctly identifying Jesus Christ. So 355 states, God says to Jesus, I shall cause you to die, and I shall contend against those who contend against you. So that sounds to me as if the God of the Quran at least is prophesying of Jesus' death and resurrection. Also Surah 1933, Jesus himself speaks, blessed is the day I die, blessed is the day I am resurrected from the dead. And so that sounds to me very much like Jesus talking about his death and resurrection. Just as it says in Isaiah 53, it's referred to as the suffering servant. And uh, just as one man came into the world, Adam, and sin, he chose to sin and rebel against God. But one man lived a perfect life, didn't sin, blemished the spotless Lamb of God, according to both the Quran and the Bible, actually testify of that Jesus didn't sin. Now it does say that Mary had other children after Jesus was born, according to the Bible. And so it doesn't talk about Mary being sinless. But she was a sinner like the rest of us that God chose to bring forth the Son of God and fulfill the scriptures. Over 200 prophecies of the Messiah coming as a suffering servant and then coming back to judge you and judge me. As it says in the Quran, it says that in the Quran. So I don't know what you're unhappy about. As it says in the Quran, it says in the Bible. So I'm only quoting what these books say. Yes, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. Yes, I do believe that he died for my sin, as the Bible testifies, even as the Quran testifies several times that everyone must die and be judged. It says in the Bible that all men die and face the judgment. But it talks about a, a blemishless lamb, a sacrifice that God provides, just like he provided the lamb for Abraham. Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, and God says, Hold on, here's the lamb. He provided him a lamb. You know, when Abel, Cain and Abel were doing a sacrifice to God, Abel sacrificed the lamb, and it was pleasing to God. And John the Baptist says about Jesus, Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. That's who Jesus was, but he's the soon coming king. He is the king of the universe. It says in John 1 and Genesis 1, in the beginning was God, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So Jesus Christ, being the word of God, was in the beginning with God. And he's referred to as part of the Godhead. The Father, Yahweh, the Son coming in the Father's name, and all those who trust in the Son shall be redeemed shall be saved according to the blood that we shed at the cross in Calvary. All we need to do is believe in God's testimony. Believe in God's testimony. Believe in what is written down according to these three main holy books out there. Prajapati sacrifice in, in the Vedas, which is God giving a part of himself for the sins of the people. The various scriptures in the Quran that speak about Jesus Christ dying and resurrecting according to his word, according to various uh, surahs, surah 3, surah 19, many dozens of things in the Quran testifying about Jesus' death and resurrection and in the Bible. Over 200 prophecies of the suffering servant in the book of Daniel, Daniel 9, Daniel 7, hallelujah, all these prophecies that Jesus died for your sin here in 2017. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Hallelujah. These things can only point us to Jesus. The Apostle Paul says that the law is a schoolmaster who brings us to Christ. How many people know the law? 
Hey, many people know that you've got rights. Hallelujah. You have got rights. A true religion doesn't take away your rights. But God gives you rights to exist. God wants you to live a happy and prosperous life without actually interfering in other people's lives. Hallelujah. He wants to give you a happy life. Jesus says, I have not come to condemn the world. I came so that you might have life more in abundance. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to save us from our sin by his blood that we shed at the cross, by us out of sin and death. Sin leads to death, and then when a person dies, they are judged by God. There is a heaven, there is a hell. I mean, every single religion out there testifies about an afterlife. And certainly if you go on to YouTube, things like that, you see the thousands of people, thousands of people who have died and have a testimony about Jesus. Either saying, this was the place you were going to go, but somebody was praying for you, or you prayed to me just before you died, to Jesus Christ. And then he sends them back to give a testimony about the fact that yes, God exists, he is coming back, the Messiah does exist, he's the only saviour. He's the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world, the spotless, blemishless Lamb of God. It's not about religion. Jesus came to completely abolish religion. It's about faith. Faith is a verb. Faith is something that you do. Many people have come out of Islam, Catholicism, Protestantism, whatever ism it is, and just said faith in Jesus who he is and accepted him as their Lord and Saviour. Daniel Chan, but many people in this country has been saved through through faith in Jesus Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. And we have freedom in this country to choose, but choose well. Big train spotting still talks about choose life. Well the King of Life is Jesus Christ. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The God of the living. Hallelujah. sin. What does the Bible teach about that? The Bible teaches we're all sinners and we fall short of the glory of God. But through the sacrifice of what Jesus Christ did, he frees us from the guilt, the condemnation, the curses that God puts on sinners are all washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. He says that a nation which sins and loves sin is a beast. God will abase that nation, but God shall exalt a nation which is righteous. Now you can only be righteous through repentance, through washing our soul through the blood of Jesus Christ. This is not a religious practice, this is something that takes faith to believe, to believe that Jesus Christ died for you. Something that you must put your trust and your faith in. Not a religion, but it's a person, it's a man, it's the Son of God. Hallelujah, which, uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brother. You know, Jesus is real. Jesus made himself real to me 20, over 20 years ago. My grandmother was dying of cancer, and I went to church. I, was, I thought I was a Christian. I thought I was a good person. But when my grandmother died, she saw a vision of Jesus and died three days later. She was a, a good Christian woman. And I prayed the prayer, do I need to know Jesus to get into your kingdom? I prayed to God, do I need to know Jesus? Within a few days, personally myself, a street preacher, went out 
told me who Jesus was, and I accepted him into my life. And from that moment, my life's been changed from the inside out. See, God wants to change you from the inside first. Yes, he does want to heal you of any diseases and sicknesses that you've got. You know, Jesus rose the dead. He, he actually made new limbs grow, new legs, new arms. He drove out death and dumb demons from children and all that stuff. Every ailment of sickness is related to something of Satan's kingdom. But Jesus came to make the works of Satan void and void. He came to destroy the works of darkness. That's what Jesus came to do. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to save our souls from death and hell. And he came to give us a victory over anything that Satan's done to you in your life. Hallelujah. And I can testify, I've done a bit of traveling. You know, I've broken, uh, fractured limbs. I've suffered from deafness. I've suffered from quite a lot of things in my travels. But God has healed me. God has always healed me. Hallelujah. He's either sent somebody to pray for me. Or he's actually directly just healed me when I've asked him. So if there's anything you want to ask God today, any worries that you have, Psalm 24 says, Cast your burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain them. That's the first scripture that I learned. Cast your burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain them. Jesus took the punishment of your sin upon the cross. He wants to carry all your burdens. God is big enough to do that. I'm not big enough to do that. A man is not big enough to do that. But Jesus Christ is big enough to do that. Right? And he is coming back very soon. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Jesus is not great. Not great. Yeah, I see. not great. Where I see. You need to seek. Seek. Seek and you shall find. Hallelujah. Right, Right. Jesus is making a great cut, right? Why does, why, why can't you, why does guys take this life? Do you take... Well, there is, why is there diseases? Well, it's because that man has chosen to sin. 